Kate Sullivan is a widowed mother of three. She lives in Oregon and works multiple jobs to provide for her kids, while struggling to pursue her dream of becoming a nurse. On her way to work at the pizza shop, Kate listens to audio tapes of her study material, since she barely has time to study. Entering the kitchen from the backside, Kate finds Burrito, the cook, watching a Spanish telenovela. She makes a snide comment on him to watch sports instead. At the front, Kate meets her best friend and employer, Teresa. Teresa hands Kate a list of her deliveries, and tells her that the person at the last delivery address is cute, and Kate should have some fun. Kate does not have a single moment to spare for fun. In the kitchen again, Burrito tries to convince Kate that telenovelas are not bad. Those stories are picked up from real life. He asks his colleague to back him up, but the man is not interested. He does not even listen to the show playing in the background, since it reminds him of working at his grandmother's. Burrito switches to Spanish, and tells the guy that if he is going to trash him in front of other people, he should do it in Spanish, so others do not understand anything. Kate shocks him by mocking him in Spanish. She leaves to pick up her three daughters from school. The eldest one, Emily, is embarrassed that her mother showed up at their school, with the pizza shop sign on top of her car. Leonardo Montenegro is a rich and spoiled playboy. He is the son of one of the world's top industrialists based in Mexico City. He spends his days partying, and his nights partying some more. Leonardo has no care in the world or any responsibilities, and spends his father's money without a second thought. He is in his yacht, dancing, and spilling champagne, with a bunch of models in bikinis when his butler, Colin, comes in. He informs Leonardo that they are going to dock at the nearest harbor for some time, and he will get the carpets cleaned. Leonardo does not care about any of it. When his father calls, Leonardo declines the call and continues partying. In Mexico City, Leonardo's father is extremely ill. He is almost on his deathbed, but the old man is holding on. Leonardo's sisters, Sofia and Magda are by their father's bedside. Magda comments that her brother must be on his yacht, having a blast of a time without a care in the world. Leonardo's father needs him to come back to Mexico. Sofia tries to comfort him that he will get better, but the old man is adamant. He is almost sure he will die soon, and must hand over the reins of Montenegro Industries to Leonardo before he departs. Magda is shocked. She is against that decision. Leonardo is hardly capable of running a multinational corporation. Pappy is not worried about that. Leonardo will rise to the occasion, he is sure of it. Just as Pappy did after that summer, when he met the love of his life in Vienna. But Sofia recalls her parents met in Barcelona. Pappy replies that he met her mother there, but he met the love of his life in Vienna. Before he can go down memory lane, Magda grabs his attention. She tells him that she is the one with the experience to run an industry, not Leonardo. Sofia intervenes telling her sister now is not the time. Magda tells her she is just trying to explain to Pappy why he should leave the business to someone who knows how to run it. That irks Sofia. She doesn't get why Magda always thinks that Sofia's experience of running their charitable division is not worthy of note. Magda gives her a saccharine smile that does not quite meet her eyes, and tells her that playing violin for the charity kids is not of much importance. Sofia gets offended. It is a cello, not a violin. She tells her that classical music saved her life. Magda retorts that it was antidepressants that saved her life. The two start to bicker, but Pappy stops them. He has made up his mind. He needs Leonardo back in Mexico City, and Magda needs to find him. Kate drops off her daughters at her mother's place. Grace, her mother, tells Kate that she has been cast in a musical. She will be going away soon. Kate is shocked and inconvenienced. Grace cannot go away, she needs to take care of the kids, while Kate works. And especially now with her nursing exam coming up in a month, Kate needs her mother's help more than ever. Grace tells her she is a 72-year-old woman. If she does not follow her dreams now, when will she? Kate is so disappointed and dejected. The only reason she moved to that city was so that she could study more. She has already failed the exam once, and she cannot afford to do it again. Grace tells her not to pin the blame on her. Kate's not the only one with a husband who passed away. Kate annoyedly reminds her mother that her father did not pass away, and they got divorced. Grace rolls her eyes at that. She wants Kate to take care of her dog Fiona, while she is away. Kate cannot believe her mother is being so selfish. After her mother leaves for her show, Kate starts to take her children with her to work. She cannot leave them alone at home, they are still too young for that. Apart from her pizza delivery job, she also works for a dry cleaners company. After hard working days, Kate tucks her kids into bed, and then settles down to study. The pressure and the stress are just too overwhelming for her. The next day, Kate goes to the docks with her dry cleaning equipment. She was called in to clean Leonardo's yacht. Kate is stunned to see the magnificent beauty in front of her. Colin leads her into Leonardo's room, which needs to be cleaned. The minute she is alone, Kate video calls Teresa. She shows the woman the beautiful yacht, and marvels at how amazing it is. She shows Teresa the bathroom, and finds candy near the sink. Who has candy in the bathroom? When Kate eats a piece of it, it turns out to be soap. Poor woman spits it out. Teresa asks Kate to show her more of the yacht. Kate zooms in on a framed photograph of Leonardo. Teresa thinks he is cute. Behind Kate, Leonardo rises from his bed. 
He had been huddled between the covers, and Kate could not see him at first. He tells her that is not a particularly good picture of him. He says hi to Teresa. Teresa waves back enthusiastically, and makes sure to inform him that Kate is single. Mortified, Kate disconnects her call. She apologizes to Leonardo. Leonardo calls Colin, and asks him to bring him his morning Bloody Mary. The man gets up from the bed, and is not wearing any clothing. He covers himself with a towel, but Kate manages to catch a glimpse of a tattoo on his backside. It is a cartoon character. Kate thinks it might have been a drunken mistake, but Leonardo tells her he got it while he was sober. He loves that character. He gets dressed in shorts and a shirt. He introduces himself to Kate. The two shake hands. Leonard sizes her up and remarks that she is fairly attractive for someone who is just a carpet cleaning lady. Kate is not sure how to feel about that comment. Leonardo begins picking her looks apart, and it makes Kate more uncomfortable. Before he can continue, Colin arrives with the Bloody Mary. Leonardo asks him to have the chef prepare breakfast, and then fire him. Colin understands, but perhaps they can give the man a two-week notice, since his wife is expecting. But Leonardo thinks his food is boring, so why bother keeping the man? Kate is stunned into silence. Just as Colin leaves, two girls wearing bikinis enter the room. They flirt with Leonardo and the man hurries away with them. But not before he asks Kate to hurry up. He will need to use the room very soon. The mechanic enters the captain's cabin and informs him that he has checked the engine thoroughly. Now they are good to go. The mechanic then asks him how Leonardo made all his money. The captain tells him that it is Leonardo's father who made the money. His family owns the largest building supplies company in the world. The son just lounges all day long and spends his time with girls. Magda visits Leonardo on his yacht. She tells him everything about their father. They will have to take a flight to Mexico that very night. Leonardo tells her they will take the boat instead. Magda tells him that Pappy does not have much time left. Leonardo is not too worried. He knows his father is a stubborn man. He will hold on. But he does want to buy a soccer team, as soon as he gets adjusted to the business. Magda is livid. She cannot believe her father is leaving the company in the hands of a child. Leonardo is a man-child. He does not know anything about handling a business that big. Kate, who had been cleaning the room quietly, overhears this conversation. Leonardo placates his sister. She can still be the brains of the company, and he can just be the face of it. It is a win-win, but Magda does not think so. Leonardo tells her that it is because their papa loves Leonardo more, and so the old man made him the company heir. Magda cannot believe just how incorrigible her brother is. Later, when Leonardo is lounging on the deck, Kate comes up to him. She is supposed to clean the room he is lounging in front of. Leonardo gives her a go-ahead, and goes on about what he is craving. He is craving something sweet, but not too sweet. Kate cannot tell if he is talking to her. He wonders if he is craving mango or papaya. Kate is about to leave to do her job, when he asks her to bring him a little bit of both. Kate refuses. That is not her job. She is just the cleaning lady. Leonardo does not understand why that is preventing her from getting him a little snack. She reminds him that is not her job, and that he has plenty of other people who can get that job done for him. She needs to finish up her work, and hurry back to pick up her kids from school. Leonardo beckons her closer. Does she not know who he is? Kate knows exactly who the man is. He is the guy who shredded her self-esteem to pieces just a while ago. Leonardo simply fires Kate, because she refused to bring him the fruits. She is appalled. She asks him to pay her for her job, and she will be on her way. Leonardo refuses to do so. Kate is enraged. He has a toilet in his yacht, that must have cost him what she makes in a year. She did the job she was hired for, and now it is time for him to pay her. But Leonardo is shamelessly obstinate. The captain comes to inform Leonardo that they are ready to ship out now. Leonardo is thrilled. He condescendingly bids Kate goodbye. But Kate will not leave until the man pays her. She tells him off. He is a horrible person. The crew in the machine room is watching the CCTV footage of the drama between Leonardo and the cleaning lady. They are having a blast. They laugh as Kate calls him a condescending prick. She bets he has not worked a single day in his self-absorbing life. Leonardo cannot believe he was so close to inviting her into the jacuzzi with him. Kate is disgusted by that. There is not enough penicillin in the world for her to jump into the water with him. The horn blows, indicating that the boat is ready to leave. Kate panics. She has to leave, but she cannot without her payment. She tries to call out to the captain to stop the ship, but the captain is in his cabin, enjoying loud music. He does not hear her. Leonardo tells her that he is charming, and women adore him for who he is. Kate retorts that he is a vain, empty little man, who would be nothing without his father's money. Just then, the ship starts to move. Kate is panicking, but she will not leave until Leonardo or one of his people writes her a check. The next stop is San Francisco, and Kate promises to bother him for the next 12 hours. Leonardo has no choice but to push Kate into the water. Kate falls with a splash. She is appalled. How could he push her off like that? Kate remembers her equipment is still in the boat. Leonardo helps her out by throwing it into the water. Kate yells for him to not do it. It is awfully expensive equipment. But Leonardo, being the incorrigible man he is, throws her bucket next. 
The ship rolls forward. Leonardo shouts at her letting her know that his life is not empty. Everyone wants to be him, because his life is meaningful. Kate grunts. She hates this man. The next day, Kate meets with Teresa at the pizza place. Kate tells her about her encounter with Leonardo the day before, and that she owes the cleaning company $3,000 for the machine Leonardo threw into the water. And they fired her. He is the devil. Teresa googles him, and finds out that Leonardo Montenegro is the son of the third richest man in the world. Bobby, Teresa's husband, is excited about it being a Latino like him. Kate has only $42 in her bank account. She needs to find another job. She asks Bobby if he is hiring. He tells her if Kate can work as a constructor, then he will hire her. Teresa feels bad for Kate. If only her kid had not just gotten into college, and Bobby had not bought a boat so impulsively, she might have helped Kate out. Kate is so dejected. She wonders why she is even studying to be a nurse. She will be delivering pizzas and cleaning carpets for the rest of her life. That night, Leonardo is in his room with a woman as usual. His sister, Magda, is in her room as they sail toward Mexico. The staff is all busy watching football and having dinner. Leonardo is drunk and when he realizes he needs something, he calls Colin on the phone, but the man does not answer. It is dinner time, and he needs a break. Leonardo goes to find the staff. He calls his staff, but they are all busy. He searches the boat, and finally finds what he has been looking for. Leonardo laughs drunkenly. He dances, happy to have found them. The boat hits a wave and Leonardo loses his balance. One moment, he is dancing, the next, he is hanging off the edge of the boat. He screams for help, but everyone is busy having fun. Magda is talking to her father on call, and she promises him to bring Leonardo back home. The woman in Leonardo's room is asleep. Even Colin cannot hear him, as he is busy watching sports with the other crew members. Leonardo falls into the ocean. The next morning, he wakes up washed up at the shore. He walks into the town, muddy and lost. When a police officer stops him and asks if he has had a rough night, the guy just panics and runs away. Colin informs a troubled Magda that they might have found her brother. At the hospital, Leonardo is diagnosed with amnesia. He cannot remember anything from his past life. All he remembers is waking up at the shore in nothing but a rope. When Magda reaches the hospital to identify the man they have found, the doctor tells her that the patient has retrograde amnesia. He tells her it could be permanent, or he could get his memories back in a week. Nothing can be said for sure. Magda works her brain. The moment she looks at Leonardo from right outside the door, she turns back. That is not her brother, she claims and walks away. Kate's life keeps getting complicated. There is a notice to vacate outside her doorstep. The woman is freaking out. She goes to Teresa and shares her predicament. She is entering panic mode when Burrow tells them about the amnesia patient in their little beach town. He is excited because this is exactly the stuff of Spanish telenovelas. When he shows them the picture of the man, Kate recognizes him as the guy from the boat. She reads the article and finds out about the unidentified Mexican woman, who did not turn out to be his sister. Kate knows it must have been the woman she saw him talk to that day on his yacht. She suspects the woman refused to recognize her brother so she could take over the company. Kate is determined to get her money back and some more for all the suffering he caused her. Her daughters agree. Olivia needs new cleats. Teresa reminds her that the man did not pay Kate when he knew her. What makes her think he will pay her now that his memory is gone? Kate is frustrated. She hates how rich people get away with everything. She decides to let that guy rot in the hospital without being identified. She will not help him. Teresa considers that. Kate could either do that, or she could take advantage of the situation. She turns to ask Burrow if he can still make fake documents. The man gets all squeaky. He is a law-abiding American citizen now. He does not do that anymore. Teresa looks at him pointedly, and the man caves. Teresa gets excited as she tells the girls to dig up some old photographs of their family, and she will bring Bobby's old clothes from when he was skinny. She has an idea that Kate will hate, but it is going to get her out of her predicament. Kate and Teresa reach the hospital. At the reception, Kate asks for her husband, the man with amnesia. The nurse is happy to see Kate. Leonardo has been somewhat of a nuisance, and they are happy to let him go now. The nurse gives Kate a packet of the belongings Leonardo had with him when he was admitted to the hospital. Kate storms out of the hospital with Teresa on her heels. Kate cannot believe what she was about to do. It is probably illegal. She stomps to her car and throws the packet she got from the nurse into the glove compartment. She sits in the driver's seat, but Teresa stops her from leaving. The only way to stop Kate from being evicted is to trick Leonardo into believing that he is her husband. There is one month left until her exam, and Bobby will hire Leonardo and give him the job so Kate can study while Leonardo pays the bills. Kate does not want to let that random guy move in with her. But Teresa tells her that is the whole point because Kate can always be home and study. She has to do this for her girls. The doctor enters Leonardo's room where he is busy playing with the puzzle. He informs Leonardo about his wife who has come to pick him up. Leonardo realizes with a start what the doctor just implied. His wife. He is married. The man cannot believe it. Kate stands at the door and greets her soon-to-be fake husband with a smile. Leonardo does not recognize her. He still cannot believe that he is married. The doctor was afraid this would happen, so he asked Kate to bring some documents to prove it. She hands the man their marriage certificate, and he finds out his name is Leo Sullivan. 
She tells him that his great-great-grandfather emigrated from Ireland to fight for Mexico in the War of 1846. Leo does not believe any of that. He throws the certificate away. Kate tells him they have been married for 15 years and that they have three daughters. Leo does not believe that either. And if he had children, it would be sons. Kate shows him Leo's passport, his birth certificate, and a picture of the two of them on their honeymoon in Reno. Leo is in complete shock. Kate weaves a story of how they met in Cancun, where he was a tour guide and she was working on a cruise ship. They dated every time the ship docked and would sneak away to eat frozen yogurt and watch the sunsets on the Playa Tortugas. Leo refuses to believe it even though Kate is trying her best to sell her lie. Leo knows, in the depths of his soul, that he is not married to this woman. Unless he sees some real proof, he will not believe it. The man stands up and walks away. Kate stops him by telling him about the tattoo on his backside. Leo scoffs. He does not have any tattoos. He lowers his underwear and checks for himself. When he does find one, he is stunned. But he has no choice but to believe Kate. Unhappy with the turn of events, Leo has no choice but to go home with Kate. He still cannot believe it though. When he sees Kate's house, Leo is horrified to find out that he is poor. Kate leads him in and introduces the girls to their dad. The girls play along into the facade. Leo cannot recognize any of them. Kate introduces Molly, Olivia, and Emily as Leo's three musketeers. Emily, the oldest girl, is the most distant of them all. She leaves from there to do her homework. Leo pulls Kate aside and asks her why none of the girls look like him. Kate tells him that they had to have the girls with a sperm donor since they were having trouble conceiving. Leo is horrified to find out that he is sterile. Kate assures him that it changes nothing. He is still their father and he does everything for their family. He works too, sometimes three jobs. And he does all the housework as well. Leo cannot stomach the fact that he has a job. He does not think he has ever worked a day in his life. He asks them what he does for a living. The younger girls tell him that before he got laid off, he used to work at a poultry processing factory. But then he met Bobby, Kate's boss's husband, who offered Leo a job at his construction company. Leo needs a drink to process all this. Kate tells him that he cannot drink. He was sober for three years, until he had a relapse a few days ago, when he ended up on the shore. It has been four days since, and he needs to get back on track. Leo feels dizzy. He goes into the restroom and looks at himself in the mirror. The man is distraught and puzzled. This cannot be his life. He hops out of the bathroom window and runs. But before he can get any further, Kate and the girls holler out to him. They smile and wave. Leo laughs nervously and tells them that they are running low on toilet paper. Kate tells him they are under the sink, and poor Leo has no choice but to get back home. On the other hand, Magda sends the yacht cruise on their merry way and tells them that she will stay back and find her brother. She pretends to get emotional. Bobby's old clothes do not fit Leo. Kate tells him he did not make the best choices when he was drunk, and he gained weight as a result. She whispers to Olivia that they need to go to Goodwill the next day and bring some clothes for Leo. Bobby's skinny is not normal skinny. There is a blue and green eagle on his shirt, and Leo assumes he must have been a big sports fan because most of his clothes are like that. Olivia, the middle child, tells him that they are all big fans of football, and they watch every game together. Kate needs to get back to studying, and the girls need to finish their homework, and Leo needs to cook. When the man hears that, he is stupefied. He does not think he can cook. He does not remember ever cooking. Kate tells him that they made a deal. While she is studying for her exam, Leo will pick up the slack at home, and that means cooking and cleaning, and every other chore. But Leo does not even know how to turn on a stove. The man is worried, but Kate is relentless. She has no mercy. She sends him into the kitchen, unarmed with any knowledge of cooking. Leo opens the fridge, and he is like a money in a math class. Kate purposely takes a can of beer out of the fridge, and drinks it in front of Leo. The poor guy cannot do anything but watch with temptation in his eyes. Magda goes to a mortuary, and buys a coffin in an urn. Leo has no idea what he is doing. The sauce he cooked does not taste good, but the noodles taste fine. Leo picks up the cooker, but forgets to use the mittens. His hands burn, and he ends up dropping the pot on the ground along with the sauce he just prepared. The dinner is on the floor now. Kate and the girls can barely keep themselves from smiling gleefully. Leo asks Kate when the maid will be there, but as he asks that question, he realizes that he is the maid. He moves to get the mop, but slips on the spilled spaghetti and sauce. Kate mockingly tells him to hurry up, since they are all very hungry. Kate is tucking the girls in for the night. Molly, the youngest one, says that it is good to have a dad around. Emily sneers at her that the man outside is not their dad. Kate turns to her eldest daughter and reminds her that she agreed to have a good attitude. Emily says she will have a great attitude if Kate lets her off the hook and let Leo babysit the other two while she can have fun like the other kids in her class. Kate's final word is that Leo will not babysit the younger ones and that Emily must always be there. She cannot leave her kids alone with a strange man, no matter what. When she comes out from the girl's room, Leo is standing outside her bedroom. He leans against the frame seductively. Kate scoffs a laugh. The man does not remember anything, but he wants to sleep with a stranger. Leo readily agrees. Kate hands him a set of bedding and tells him that Leo and his sponsor came up with the idea that unless Leo has been clean and sober for over 30 days, he cannot sleep with Kate. Leo does not like that at all. 
He asks if he has to sleep on the couch. But no, not even there since the last time he slept, he ended up in the liquor cabinet. Leo is confused. So where will he even sleep? Kate leads him to the shutout back. There is a cot there. She gives him some blankets and a big plastic bottle to do his business and if he needs to. Leo cannot wrap his head around this life. This cannot be how he used to live. The guy is shaken and in disbelief. Magda goes to a campsite at night and takes some leftover ash from the grill. She fills the urn with it and runs away. The next morning, Leo is woken up by a loud alarm. The sun has barely risen and Leo is waiting for Bobby to pick him up for work. Bobby and Leo arrive at the construction site. Bobby introduces Leo to the rest of the men working there. There are Burrow, Burrito, Old Man Vito, and Lucky, Bobby's nephew. When Burrow shakes hands with Leo, he cannot help but notice how soft Leo's hands are. The crew starts to laugh, and they call him Lady Hands. Bobby pushes them off to work. Leo stops him, looking a little worried. He has never worked at a construction site before, and he asks Bobby to let him off easy. Bobby assures Leo he has got his back. But Bobby lied. He gave Leo so much hard work, the poor guy cannot catch a break. Back in Mexico City, Pappy hugs the urn in which lie Leo's so-called ashes. Magda puts on an act. Pappy takes a whiff of the ashes, and they smell like meat. He turns to Magda and asks her why. The woman fumbles but manages to blow the suspicion off her. She convinces Sofia and Pappy that Leonardo is no more. And while it is a very emotional time, Magda still brings up the topic of the company. Pappy tells her that when he is on the ground, Magda will get the position. Magda pretends to be humbled. While working, Leo looks inside the luxurious house and sees the rich man sitting with his partner inside. Leo cannot help but feel a longing for that life. He is saddened by his current circumstances. Lucky comes over and watches with Leo, the man inside the house. He tells him that someday, he is going to have a house like that, and Leo is welcome to come over anytime. Leo gets bullied by the other men. He is not as good as them at work, and he can barely move a barrow up the ramp. The guys laugh at him and call him Lady Hands. Leo gets fueled by their bullying, and he gains some momentum before pushing the barrow up the ramp with so much force that he ends up falling into the huge crate full of mud. The other men have a blast of time laughing at him. When Leo gets home, he can barely walk. He falls onto the couch. He is tired, he is thirsty, and can barely speak up. Kate asks him how his first day was, and the man can barely string together coherent sentences. Every part of his body hurts. Kate tells him to take a few minutes of rest, before getting on with his chores for the day. That wakes Leo up with a jolt. Kate hands him a list of chores he needs to do that day. Leo looks at the woman, like she has grown two horns on her head. The man can barely move off the couch, and she wants him to work again. Having no choice, Leo goes to the supermarket. He picks up a few things on the list. A man at the supermarket thinks he has seen Leo somewhere before. He asks Leo if he works at Jiffy Loop. Leo makes a disgusted face. He hopes not. Leo looks around and finds a cooking magazine. He takes it along. Back at home, the girls like the new pasta Leo made. He tried something different, and it worked. But Kate pretends to be not impressed. Her reaction pinches Leo a little bit. Kate takes her food away to her room, so she can study but before leaving, she makes sure to instruct Leo to clean up and that it is garbage day. While cleaning up after Kate's mother's dog, Fiona, Leo understands why he lost his memory. His life must have been hideous as it is now. He hates every second of it. After Kate puts the girls to bed, Leo is again waiting for her outside the bedroom door. Kate tells him no again. The next day, Bobby enjoys watching Leo work hard. It is comical to see the man try to work. Leo hates this job. Kate enters the pizza shop, and Teresa is there. She tells the woman what a genius she is for giving her the idea to trick Leo. Kate cannot remember the last time she had a full night's sleep, and Leo's making coconut rice and chicken skewers for dinner. Kate could not be more grateful. She finally got enough study done in the last week. She is so grateful to Teresa. At lunch, the men are sitting together. Leo shares his struggles with them. He tells them how he feels like he is living someone else's life. When he looks at the guy with that huge mansion and his view of the ocean, he thinks that is what his life should be like. The men laugh at him, who doesn't think that way. But all jokes aside, Leo feels like there is something profoundly wrong with his life. When he looks at his wife, he cannot recognize the person she is. The men chip in that they feel the same way. Again, his misery becomes their laughingstock. But Leo is serious. He does not even think the two of them are husband and wife. Kate does not even let him sleep in the same bed as her. Leo feels like he is just a paycheck, and nothing else. Vito tells him that is exactly what he is. The men tell him they all feel that way as well. Leo finds comfort in that. Vito tells him that Leo is lucky and he should be grateful. He has a job and a wife who puts up with him. And he has got three beautiful, healthy baby girls. Leo has never thought of his situation that way. Vito stands in front of Leo and tells him that right about now, Don Corleone would tell him to act like a man and then he would slap him. Vito asks if he needs to slap Leo for him to get to the point. The man refuses. He got the point. But Vito slaps him anyway. It is all good-spirited leg pulling. The men all laugh. That night when Bobby drops Leo home, the man stands in front of his house and recalls Vito's words. He smiles and walks inside. Kate is studying for her exam when Leo tells her he has got something for her. 
frozen yogurt, like they used to eat back when they would go to Playa Tortugas. It takes Kate a moment to recall the lie she weaved that she had told him the first day in the hospital. Leo sits down next to her and tells her that from now on, he is going to try a little harder at being the man of the house. He eats his frozen yogurt. It is mango flavored. He loves mangoes. He asks Kate if he has always loved mango. Kate recalls their first fight on the yacht and nods. He has loved mangoes for as long as she has known him. Does she mean back in the old days, when they could not stay away from each other? Leo looks at her insinuatingly. Kate tells him no. Defeated but not discouraged, Leo goes to his shed to sleep. Back in Mexico City, Sofia is sitting by her father's bedside and talking to him about the time she went to New York to become a concert cellist, and he got mad at her and cut her off. She has mostly forgiven him for that now. The lady cries though, for her brother. Leonardo was the only person who had been there for her, and given her the courage to follow her passion. His death was so sudden. Sofia cannot wrap her head around it and Magda has been so vague about it all. The woman is holding the urn in her hands as she thinks about Leonardo. She turns the urn over and below it, she sees the tag of the shop it was bought from. Sophia calls the shop to get a death certificate for Leonardo, who had died a couple of weeks earlier in a shark attack, the lie that Magda fed her family. Leo is carrying a bag of cement. He cannot believe just how heavy the bag is. When he puts it down, he sees the name of the company on it, Montenegro. It does not ring a bell for him. Bobby finally hands the men their paychecks. Leo is so happy to have the first ever paycheck that he can remember. When Leo gets home, he sees Molly sitting in the yard. The other kids around the neighborhood are biking but Molly is not. Leo asks why that is. The girl tells him she cannot ride without training wheels yet. Leo is surprised to find that he never taught his daughter to ride a bike. He promises to fix it. Leo is in the kitchen putting the groceries away. When Emily sees him there, she asks him now that he is at home, can she go out to the pool with her friends? Leo agrees to her request without hesitation. Kate is talking to her mom on the phone as she drives to deliver the pizza. Grace is telling her about her performances when Kate spots Emily at the pool while passing by from there. She is shocked to see the girl. Emily was supposed to be looking after her sisters. Kate drags her daughter back to the car and admonishes her. She yells that Emily cannot leave her sisters alone with Leo. They do not know anything about the guy. Emily complains that it is not her fault because she did not bring him to the house. The two quarrel all the way home. They are almost on the doorstep when Kate hears the girls screaming. She hurries inside only to find Leo and the girls watching the football game on TV. Emily grunts at her mother for bringing her back forcefully. Leo has been nothing but a decent man. He even got the leak in the roof fixed. And Kate notices that he unpacked the Goodwill boxes and rearranged the living room. Leo tells her the couch needed some color. He goes on to say a sentence in French. But then he is shocked to realize that he can speak French. Kate tells him it is because he used to be a tour guide. Emily snaps at her mother for humiliating her for no reason. Everyone's safe and sound. Kate yells back at Emily as the girl climbs upstairs. She reminds her that they had a deal, and Emily did not stick to it. Kate grounds Emily for a week. The girl slams her door shut. Leo tries to tell Kate to go easy on Emily. She is a teenager, and Kate must remember what it was like to be 13. Kate's being a little hard on the girl. Kate glares at the man and snaps at him. He does not need to tell her how to raise her kids. Leo is hurt by her words. Just because he did not father the girls, does not mean he is not their father too. All he does is work and slave for their family, and this is how Kate treats him. Leo is disappointed and upset. What Kate said was a low blow, unfair and hurtful. Leo leaves the house because he needs some air. Leo ends up at an AA session. He shares his predicament with the people in that group. It is late at night, and Kate is up studying. Leo still has not returned home. She runs down to the fridge to grab a snack, but when she opens the door, Kate sees that the fridge is fully stocked with prepared food. She is shocked to see that Leo did all of it. A smile comes over her face. Sophia contacts the police in the district where Leonardo was found. The police officer tells her that there has been no case of a shark attack in over four years. Sophia gets suspicious of Magda. Kate is studying when Leo gets home. Leo apologizes to Kate, but she says it is her who should apologize. But Leo insists. He needs to keep his side of the street clean and should cultivate a grateful attitude. Kate apologizes for overreacting. She ungrounded Emily after talking to her. Kate's been stressed about her test, and she is all over the place. Leo tells her that he talked to Teresa about picking up some of Kate's shifts at the delivery place. Kate is grateful to Leo for doing that. He also suggests that he will take the kids out on Sunday, so Kate can study by herself. Kate is about to say no, but then she realizes she would appreciate that. While making coffee for Kate, Leo accidentally cuts his hand. He freaks out because he fears blood. Kate calms him down and takes care of his small injury. She assures him that she is being trained to take care of injuries. When Kate manages to calm Leo down, he tells her that she has exceptionally good bedside manners. Kate smiles. She is always worried about that part. Leo tells her she is a natural. The two share a silent moment of companionship. Then Leo decides to let her study and go back to his shed. Kate stops him before he can leave and lets him have the couch. Leo has never been more grateful about anything else. The next day, he delivers pizzas for Kate. 
He enters the kitchen at the pizza shop, where Burrito is watching a telenovela. Leo is equally invested in Catalina and Archero's story. Then, on Sunday, he takes the girls out. He drops Emily at the pool but just as he is about to leave, he sees Emily laughing with the boy. Leo instantly feels protective of the girl. He drags her away. Emily complains that she does not have to listen to him. He is not her real dad. That hurts Leo again. But he still will not let her talk to some boy, who wants only one thing to do with her. Emily tells him that the boy she was talking to is gay. Emily starts to cry. She is miserable. Leo is concerned for her. She tells him that she was popular in her old school, but here she is an outcast. She likes a boy in her Spanish class, but he does not even know she exists. She was just talking to the lifeguard, because that boy is friends with him. Leo is happy to know that Emily is learning Spanish. Leo comforts the girl, and tells her that she is pretty and smart and beautiful. Any boy who does not notice her is a fool. That makes Emily feel a little better. Anyone would be lucky to be her boyfriend, but she is too young to have one right now. Leo forbids her from having a boyfriend at this age, but trusting the girl who is his daughter, Leo lets her go and have fun. He attends Olivia's football matches, and proudly proclaims her as his daughter. He brings the whole family to go out biking. Seeing Molly ride a bike without training wheels, Kate is surprised. She is thankful to Leo, but also worried that her daughters are getting attached to Leo. Leo takes Molly and the girls out to get ice cream. When the youngest girl asks him if he is going to leave them soon, Leo reassures her he will not. Why would he? He is her father. He promises to never leave. Kate gives her exam, and it goes smoothly. Pappy has recovered. Magda is shocked to see her father standing on his own two feet. Magda gets worried about her inheriting the company, but Pappy tells her that he will hand over the reins to her soon. The woman is happy. Sophia, on the other hand, is still not convinced of Magda's lies. She calls Colin and asks if he saw Leonardo's body. Colin tells her Magda handled it all by herself. Teresa and Bobby are happy to know Kate's test went well. Kate is happy. Now she can let Leo off the hook. The man has paid his dues. But Kate feels nervous about telling him. She gets home from her shift, and Leo is preparing dinner. Kate is about to tell him the truth, when Leo calls the girls for dinner. The girls sit around the table with Leo. He asks Kate what she wanted to tell him. But one look at the faces of her daughters tells Kate that they do not want her to tell Leo the truth just yet. Kate chickens out and instead tells him that it is their anniversary. That makes Leo happy. He decides to take Kate out dancing. After a fun night of dancing and drinking, the two stop by the harbor. Leo thanks Kate for sticking by him through 15 years of marriage. Kate smiles hesitantly. The ship nearby honks three times, and Kate wonders what that means. She asks Leo. The man tells a made-up story of how it is based on a romantic Spanish legend. Catalina, a commoner, and Archero, a governor's son, fell in love. But the governor forbade their union, and sent Archero away. Before leaving, Archero promised Catalina that he would return for her, and he would honk the ship three times. That will be his signal for her. Kate laughs, because this sounds like the shows the kitchen guys watch. Leo feigns innocence, and goes on telling her the story of how Catalina and Archero reunited. Kate finally kisses Leo. The two spend a romantic night together. The next day, Leo and his construction crew are happy to have finally completed the construction of the pool. Leo and the girls are watching the game, while Kate worries about her entrance exam results. Teresa is there as well. She asks Kate to relax. It is half time and Leo needs to go pick up lunch. He gets the list from Kate and kisses her before leaving. Just as Leo is about to pull out of their driveway, Kate remembers a few more items. She asks him to write them down because he will forget them otherwise. Leo searches for a pen in Kate's car. He opens the glove compartment and finds the package. Leo is shocked to see those. He gets out of the car and confronts Kate about it. Why does a wife of an infertile man have those in her car? Leo is livid. He thinks Kate is cheating on him and disrespecting their marriage vows. Kate is glad Leo found those because now she can tell him the truth. Kate confesses that the two of them are not married, and her daughters are not his kids. Leo cannot believe Kate is resorting to such a low blow. To convince him, Kate takes him inside the house and asks her daughters to tell him the truth. The girls act innocent and do not confess. Leo leaves the house, enraged at Kate. Teresa follows him out. Kate asks her daughters why they did not tell him the truth. The girls like him, and they want to keep Leo forever. Teresa covers for Kate. She convinces Leo that Kate was covering for her instead, and those belong to Teresa. She has been cheating on Bobby. Leo is stunned but Teresa convinces him to not tell Bobby, because she wants to do it on her own. Leo believes her. He apologizes to Kate for not trusting her. When he hears the match starting again, Leo goes inside the house. Kate gets mad at Teresa for not telling Leo the truth. Teresa tells her that even though their relationship is a little unconventional, Kate and Leo are good together. Kate should stop fighting it. Leo and the girls run out of the house and give Kate the good news. She passed her exam. She is a nurse. The family rejoices and hugs each other. The family goes to the pier to celebrate Kate's victory. Teresa, Bobby, and Lucky are also there. Lucky plays football with the girls and keeps them busy. Leo talks to Bobby about Teresa and his problem. Bobby plays along to the lie his wife told Leo. The man who recognized Leo before at the supermarket spots Leo playing chicken fight with the girls in the water. 
The man is the engineer, who fixed the yacht when it was docked in their town the day of Leo's accident. He instantly recognizes Leo as the yacht owner. The first time he had seen Leo, Leo had been playing chicken fight in his jacuzzi in the yacht. The man snaps a picture of Leo, and sends it to the yacht's captain. Leo's family is holding a funeral for Leo on his yacht. The captain shows the picture of Leonardo to Colin. Colin informs his family about it. The picture was taken just a few minutes ago. Everyone except Magda is happy to find that out. Back at Kate's party, Kate thanks everyone for helping her, especially Leo. Without him, she could not have passed her test. Leo goes down on one knee and proposes to Kate. Since he does not remember their love and marriage, he wants to start again with her. Kate says yes. Everyone is happy, and now they have a double cause for celebration. The next day, Leonardo's yacht returns to Oregon. Unaware of this, Leo, Kate, and the girls are happy. They are returning home from their picnic. The moment they get back home, they notice a limousine waiting outside the house. Leonardo's family gets out of the car. When Leo sees his father and his sisters, he waves back at them and smiles. He even calls them by their names, as he simultaneously heads inside the house with their bags. Kate and the girls watch, arrested in motion. Leo walks back out, and the realization that he remembers his family washes over him. He remembers his name. He's Leonardo Montenegro. The man happily hugs Kate. His memory is back. He also remembers that he is rich. The man is on cloud nine. But then it hits him. Kate is not his wife. Leo steps away from her. He cannot understand why Kate would do that to him. But then he remembers her. She is the awful carpet cleaning lady who hated him. Kate has no explanation for him. She tricked Leo and used him. Leo is heartbroken. She takes his name to stop him, but he tells her his name is not Leo. It is Leonardo. The man walks away from her to get his stuff from the house, but then he realizes none of the things in the house belong to him. He walks out and goes with his real family. Heartbroken as he is, Leo does not even stop when the three girls run after him. They bang on his car door for him to stop, but he does not. Molly chases the car on her bike, but Leo keeps going away. Colin welcomes Leo back to his boat, his birthday present. The girls are eating spaghetti for lunch. Molly comments that she likes her dad's sauce better. Kate reminds her that Leo was not really their dad. Emily asks her why she did not stop the man. Kate could not do that after having lied to him. She kidnapped him. Emily tells her that it is obvious Kate is in love with Leo. Kate cannot do anything about it now. Leo is back to his old life and his supermodels. At the yacht, Pappy is happy to have Leonardo back. Pappy decides to hand over the business to Leonardo. This outrages Magda. Leonardo suggests a business idea. After having worked as a construction worker, he thinks a bag of cement should be 30 pounds. Magda tells him that would cost them extra. Leonardo does not care. The 90-pound bags are heavy for workers to carry. It's a bad business decision. Pappy tells Magda not to fuss. Leonardo will learn over time. As Colin arrives to pour a drink for Leonardo, the man refuses at first because he does not drink. But then he recollects that he does, in fact, drink. It was Leo Sullivan who did not. Leonardo celebrates his return with a drink. While at her mother's performance, Kate realizes that she needs to get Leo back. She takes her girls and leaves her mother's performance. Leonardo is in the yacht's kitchen, getting his own drink. He tells Colin how he has had this yacht for over 10 years, and he has never set foot in the kitchen. Colin tells him it is because Leonardo has always had people to take care of his things for him. Leonardo recalls his days as a construction worker, and tells Colin he hated rich men like him. He asks if Colin ever hated him, he can be honest. Colin replies that the reason he got this job is because the last guy was honest about his feelings. Leonardo confesses to Colin that he is not sure where he fits in. Colin tells him that most people only see the world from one view. Leonardo has had the chance to see it from both perspectives. But did Leonardo hate it? Kate arrives at the pizza parlor, asking for Bobby's help. She needs his boat. The next day, Leonardo gets the captain to go back to Oregon. When Pappy finds out, he is shocked. Leonardo wants to be with that con artist. He will not let that happen. Leonardo tries to reason with the old man, but he does not listen. Magda overhears the hustle. She tells Leonardo to follow his heart and go be with the pizza nurse. Pappy is enraged. How can Leonardo throw away the company's future like that? Magda is completely supportive of Leonardo's decision. Sophia knows why that is. Magda wants Leonardo out of her way again. Sophia reveals to the family how Magda lied and faked Leonardo's death, even though she always knew he was alive. She refused to recognize him at the hospital. The women start arguing and fighting. Leonardo is shocked that Magda did that to him, but he gets distracted by the sound of a boat honking three times. He recognizes that as Kate's signal. Leonardo rushes to the front of the yacht. Pappy pushes the captain aside and turns the boat around. When the two spot each other, they wave to each other, calling Arturo and Catalina's names. Just like in the fake legend Leo told Kate about. Suddenly, Leonardo's yacht starts to turn around. Pappy will not listen to Leonardo. He thinks Kate has brainwashed Leonardo, and he needs to take his son away from her. Leonardo runs to the other side of the yacht. Bobby's boat is not fast enough to catch up with Leonardo's. Leonardo comes to the other side and spots Kate. He hollers to her that he loves her. Kate loves him too. The girls jump around, happily. Leonardo jumps from the top of the yacht into the water. Kate jumps in too. 
The two swim toward each other. Bobby tries to free the dinghy. Pappy speaks into a microphone letting Leonardo know that if he chooses Kate, he will lose his inheritance. That is enough to stop Leonardo. Pappy tells him that he will be disinherited, and his sister will get the company. Not Magda, but Sophia. The ship's crew is watching this drama unfold on the CCTV footage. Sophia tells Magda that she will be put in charge of the charity division. That is Magda's worst nightmare. Bobby gets to Kate and pulls her up on the dinghy. Leonardo is still negotiating with his father. The man is relentless. He will not give Leonardo a single penny if the man decides to go with Kate. Pappy asks Leonardo to choose. This is not what Kate envisioned this moment would be like. Leo tells her to wait. It is not easy to choose between love and money. Leonardo tries to negotiate with his father but to no avail. The old man does not budge. Leo must decide now. He turns to Kate and chooses her. Bobby tells Leo to reconsider. He will be giving up a lot of money and he should take a minute to consider it. Kate scowls at Bobby to stay out of it. But Bobby goes on about how love fades and the money stays. Leo should take some time to think about it. Teresa yells at her husband from the boat to keep quiet. Leo tells Kate that his life was richer when he was poor with her. Kate gets back into the water and the two kiss. The girls cheer for their parents. A few weeks later, Leo is in the kitchen packing lunches for everyone. The family gathers in the living room when the doorbell rings. It is Colin. Leo is happy to see Colin. The butler asks Leo his services are available if Leo is looking to hire. But Leo does not have the kind of money anymore to be able to afford Colin's services. Colin reminds him that he still is the owner of the yacht. The deed is in Leo's name. Leo is pleasantly surprised. But when Colin tells him the yacht is worth $60 million, the family bursts into joyous cheer. They hug each other. Their days of being poor are over. In the end, Leo and Kate get married on the yacht in the presence of friends and family.